JT Tumaloa. The very latest on this recruitment. It's a big deal, first off. You know it's a big deal because we don't talk a lot of individual recruitments on late kick, but JT Tumaloa is the exception to the rule. He's the number one player overall in this last recruiting class. So it's imperative that I stress, if you're a casual college football fan, what's happening here? This is not a 2022 kid. JTT will be playing on a campus somewhere this fall. He's still in high school right now. He's about to graduate, but he is the only unsigned prospect from the 2021 recruiting cycle. Now, I know what the perception versus reality is is here any time a kid goes well past signing day, there's a stigma that's attached to them automatically. Uh, it's, they're about the drama, spectacle, all about me, selfish, attention, you know what. Uh, this is none of those. So I want to just let you know what's happening. This has not been a drama-filled recruitment at all. Uh, this has not been a recruitment built on spectacle at all. This is not attention-seeking whatsoever. Tua Maloa plays his college, well, he plays high school football in Washington. He lives in Washington. Things have been shut down there. He couldn't get out to take official visits. And he was steadfast the entire time. I have options, and I'm not going to be a guy who just takes Zoom visits and goes to Columbus, Ohio, or Tuscaloosa, Alabama, you know, two or 3,000 miles away from home, having never been there before. So, you know, in, in some ways, it is fortunate that he is so highly rated that Schools are willing to save a spot for him. But because he is that, and that's the reality of the situation, he has said the whole time, I'm going to take my visits. And so now it's visit time. And this particular weekend, as we speak right now here on Sunday, he's at Washington. So that's obviously the closest to home. Now, that's, uh, it was Friday, and that lasts through Sunday. And so then you're going to take a timeout, and this next weekend, this upcoming weekend, that's his high school graduation. Then it gets really crazy, okay? So if you're watching on YouTube, Jesse is showing you when the official visits are happening. And I want you to check this out. This is like watching the Eagles tour circa 1976. So he'll be in Los Angeles the 14th through the 16th. Then he'll be in Columbus, Ohio the 18th through the 20th. Then we're going to shoot from Columbus, Ohio all the way to the West Coast. We'll be in Eugene, Oregon, same day. You're going to go straight from Ohio State to Oregon the 20th through the 22nd. And then Bama gets the hammer. They get the last visit, the 25th through the 27th. And then we get, we would assume, an announcement shortly thereafter. Now, what we have talked about with this recruitment and many recruitments in the past is there's not a lot of information. I'm telling you guys, if you're just a casual viewer of this, this is not some kid who's running around to every live microphone doing an interview. It's not a guy who's, you know, very dramatic on all his social media channels. Very reserved, very quiet, hellacious player now. There's a reason he's the number one overall rated player in the country. And even though he's not an early enrollee, he's so good he could still play for a team like Ohio State or Alabama or Oregon this fall. He's that good now. Uh, we wouldn't be talking about him if he wasn't. But when I started that point about 30 seconds ago and got sidetracked, what I was going to say was, in these recruitments where it's high profile, but there's not a ton of new information leaking, it's a perfect storm for misinformation. Because the thirst for new information out there doesn't go away. It's just that there isn't a whole lot. Instead of a steady flow out of the hose pipe, maybe there's like one drip from the faucet, you know, every couple of minutes, and that's not enough to quench thirst. So what happens is, one person says one thing that's kind of informed, and because there's a lack of other information to be had elsewhere, everyone runs with that one thing. So I'm going to use an example here. This is not the way it actually happens, but let's just say, for example, Steve Wolfong or Brandon Huffman, those two guys are you know, really locked in on this recruitment. Let's say that they came out and they said, I think Ohio State leads here. And let's say in reality their information was, a family member gave them that information but said, that's what we think. And, you know, that was a couple of months ago, but there's, since there's no new information, they say that, okay? Since there's no new information, everyone else runs with that. And all of a sudden, if you're just a casual observer, you're hearing from 52 different places Ohio State leads for JTT. So you assume it's a foregone conclusion he's going to Ohio State. Well, you see quickly how that snowball of not misinformation – but, uh, you know, sort of a false pretense can grow. This happens in recruiting sometimes. The reason I'm saying all that, and let me stress again, that was a hypothetical. The reason I'm stressing all that is because it has been perception for a little while that Ohio State was the leader here. I thought it, only because I hadn't tried to really dig deep on it. And I'm not telling you they're not the leader. What I'm telling you is, if you find anyone out there that's talking about this recruitment and they use the words, done deal, 
you need to take those people and you need to jettison them from your life, at least when it comes to college football talk, because they don't know what they're talking about. This is the classic lottery ticket situation. Someone out there is going to guess the right lottery numbers tonight, and then they're going to tell all their buddies, I knew it, I just had a feeling, I knew it. No, you didn't. You just guessed right, and the law of mathematics happened to work in your favor this one time. Someone out there is going to claim they know where this kid's going, and he's going to end up going there, having made the decision the night before he announces it, and that person, having made the statement two months ago, is going to say, called it, knew it, told you. This has been done for months. Let me, in as certain a terms as I can tell you, inform you, this is not done. There's a reason the visits are happening. This is not done. However, I do want to address this because I've heard it from a couple of places, and these places are the mouths of people I trust. The perception has been this is Ohio State, and if it's not Ohio State, it's probably Alabama. I think those two programs are in it. I think the Oregon Ducks are way more of a player for JTT than probably nationally people think. I know Oregon's been in it the whole time, and geographically they're close, but I get a feeling that Oregon has been paid just passing mind by the general public. Oregon's way in this thing. And I'll tell you, I'll go out on a little limb here. If I were to handicap this thing, I'd put Bama as the favorite to land him. I'd put Oregon behind Bama. I'd put Ohio State third. So for what it's worth, having not claimed intimate insider knowledge, but just maybe picking up whispers here and there, let me put it that way. I wouldn't be shocked at all if he went to Alabama. Wouldn't be shocked if he went to Oregon. I think those two programs are in really good position here. Buckeyes still get him on campus. They could turn this thing, so who in the world knows? But that's the latest on JTT. This is a very important recruitment to follow.